Hey everybody, this is Bobby from Raytown Productions, and today I wanted to make a video to show you how to make your own bass drops for your music productions. So if you need something that's hard hitting, uh, this is a perfect video. You can customize it any way you want. So to do this, um, I'm going to give you an example on this band that I've worked with from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They're called These Fading Visions, and this song is called Prove Me Wrong. And I want to add a bass drop to this breakdown right here, and so I'll give you a little sample here. So clearly we want to have a huge bass drop here. And to make them, what you're going to want to do is uh, set, the first thing we have to do is set our locators. So up here, you want to set it for the length of the bass drop that you want. So for this particular one, I want it to be one bar long. And so now that that's set, what we're going to do is add a new channel. So we go to add audio track. It can be mono or stereo audio track. It's whatever, whatever you want. And in Cubase, they have a built-in plugin called a test generator. So we're going to instantiate that on the track. And what you're going to hear now is this annoying ringing sound and what that is is that's the sine wave that's being generated so you can adjust this and you hear the pitch just changing we're just gonna bypass that because that can get really annoying really fast and for a bass drop what we're going to want to do is match the sine wave with the key of the song and so this song is in the key of C and so when that breakdown hits it is a C the second octave of C which is about 65 hertz and so you can look all this stuff up on tables online just look for um, pitch or frequency for notes and you should be able to find the right frequency for what you're doing so now what we want to do is render the sine wave for the length of the bass drop that we're looking for so to do this we have to activate the sine wave generator sorry for the noise and we're gonna solo the track that it's on and then we go to File, Export, Audio Mix Down. And then here, you're just going to name name it. I named it Bass Drop. And I like to keep everything in the same format as the audio that, that was recorded. So it's a, we recorded WAV files, so the format's going to be WAV. And then make sure you match your, your sample rate and bit depth to your project. So if we look at our project up here, we see it's 48 kilohertz, 24 bits. So match that so you have the same quality um audio file for the bass drop as you do all the recorded stuff then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you tick audio track here because we want to import this back into the project so um hit export and so now it's rendering this sine wave and we want to copy it to our working directory and so now we have our sine wave so now you can go and disable this so it stops making that that bass frequency and now we have a workable bass drop but then it cuts off right away and it doesn't really have that bass drop kind of sound to it so to do the pitch shifting and the diving sound that, that you usually hear on these types of productions what we're going to do is you're going to click on that newly generated bass drop tone and we're going to pitch shift it down over time. And so to do that, you're going to go to audio, process, and then pitch shift. So when you normally load this up, it'll bring you to this screen. And you're going to want to go to the, this envelope tab. And what this allows you to do is to change the pitch over time. So this is perfect for something like a bass drop where you want the pitch to decrease uh, gradually. So you can do it a few different ways. I usually let like to have my bass drops uh, decrease by about an octave, which is 12 semitones. So I would leave the range at 12 semitones. You grab this little marker here, and you can bring that down. And so what this is doing now is this will keep the same frequency for half the length of that bar and then decrease the pitch for the last half. You can customize the, the pitch shift any way you want. So if you want it to decrease in a straight line, you can just bring that all the way over and now it'll decrease right from the beginning all the way down over the course of that bar. 
Uh, if you want it to be steady and then kind of dive bomb, you can do that. And then these different options change the, the curve or the pitch shift. So you feel free to ex experiment with that. Um, some important things I do want to talk about is this algorithm settings. Now, if you go to the time correction, this is going to adjust the total length of this to make sure it, when it, after pitch shifts it down, it's the same length. And that sounds like it could be a good option, but what I've found is that these different algorithms make the, make the bass drop sound strange because they're, they're performing these complex calculations to make sure that the length is the same. So there's a bunch of different choices you can choose from. If you want to make sure it's exactly a certain length, uh, feel free to try this, but make sure you go through these different algorithms because it sounds very different. So I found that if you untick the time correction, it actually sounds a little bit better to my ears. So I'm going to leave it like that. So now when we process it, you'll see that when the pitch drops, it's going to extend the length of the sample a little bit. And so you can see it added about a quarter bar to it. Now, the last thing, so we have uh, the note hit and then the pitch decreases over time. Uh, and to make the transition smooth, what I like to do is just add a fade to the end here. So you can just grab the corner and drag it over, or if that doesn't work, you want to process it, you can go to audio, process, and then fade out. And then here you have a bunch of different options as well on how you want the audio to fade out. So um, doing that, we have a bass drop that now drops in pitch and then fades out as the pitch decreases. So hopefully this video has shown you how to make your own bass drops and how to customize it any way you want. Um, if this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, make sure to leave those below. I will be going back and checking those out and trying to answer any questions I see. I'll be making a bunch more videos like this in the future, so make sure to subscribe if you're interested in getting more of those helpful tutorials.